Wednesday, August the 10th. And a uh, question you might be asking is, what are we gonna do for strength today? It is the week before a new cycle, the week after the last cycle. Um, we were building up strength overhead, creating stability overhead. Stability that we will one day use to do really good handstand push-ups. So while today, what we're gonna officially program is sort of like an open gym time, a goat day to work on something that you've been wanting to work on, my hope is, that many of you will practice handstand push-ups during that time, or some of the skills associated with handstand push-ups that we've gone over over the last few weeks. Now, you know, um, I say this for every class, but for my classes in particular, I will not be, um, I'm not coaching today, so uh, just throwing it out there that, you know, by no fault of Robbie's, who will be there in my place, uh, in my place he hasn't been there on Wednesdays at 5.30, so I apologize for not being there today. Um, I know where everybody's at, sort of, and uh, would be able to provide some sort of guidance. That being said, you guys know what the deal is. You know what you need to work on, and uh, uh, and you know the pieces of the handstand push-up. So what do we want to see? Big kick up to the wall, but not kick up where you start on your head, right? We always want to kick up to a, a locked out position that we've been talking about all cycle long. From there, you know about the negative. Right? You know how to slowly let yourself down in control so that you're not slamming yourself on your neck, which we can't have. And that if Robbie sees it or any of the other coaches see it, we'll immediately put a stop to it. Once you're in a headstand at the bottom, you're in a tripod position, which is something we also worked on. And from there, can you kip up out and press your body weight up and lock out? All things that we've been doing. And at the top, right, when you kick out and you do successfully do a handstand pushup, which you will, what are you doing then? You're doing a handstand hold, which we proved we can do for up to two minutes. So uh, all kinds of things that you can work on. Put all those three things together. Try some kipping handstand push-ups. Don't put them together at all. Don't even try to do handstand push-ups. You can work on pressing. You can make it a shoulder day. We have all kinds of exercises at our disposal. And I'll just say, like some of you want a handstand walk, good day to practice that as long as your coach knows you're doing it and you potentially have a spotter. Um, and then, you know, if you do something, if there's something else that is your goat right now that you've been working on and you want to do that instead, just let your coach know and you can do it. Outside of that, we have a Tabata. Um, Tabatas come in many shapes and sizes, but there is a sort of default style of Tabata, and that's basically what we're going to do today. And that is you do a movement that you stay on 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, and you stay on it for eight sections. Basically, you do it eight times. That's four minutes long. Today we're going to take a full one minute of rest between those movements uh, and there's four total movements. What are they? First one, toes the bar. Um, we want to pick a modification where we're at least getting two or three every time we, if not strung together, then at least in singles every time, every interval, including the eighth interval. So really have to be strategically, strategically uh, uh, modified on that. Um, if you have it or if you've done it before, strict toes the bar. This could be a really big strength day for you. Go for it. Uh, again, with the help or, or approval of your coach. Um, after that, we have push pressing, which makes sense with a dumbbell. Uh, it makes sense because this is kind of what we've been working on this entire cycle, this overhead strength. Let's see if we've improved it all. But what I like about this Tabata, we always say, especially with dumbbells, we find out if we have imbalances one side or the other. And you'll have a full four minute Tabata on just one side and then later on to finish out the wad, you'll have a full four minute Tabata on just the other side. And in that time period, you will, you know, a lot of times we just say sort of anecdotally, I feel like one side is stronger than the other, or one side is weaker than the other, one feels stranger than the other. Today, you will know for sure. Um, I just got done this workout. My left side, I started with fresher. I did it in the second round. And I was only able to get like six every minute. And then, in the last interval, I did my right arm, my dominant arm, I was getting eights and nines. Like I, I did a full like 20 reps better on my one side, which is not great, but uh, hey, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, and then the other movement is pull-ups. And same thing goes with the, with the pull-ups as we said for toes to bar, two to three every time you get up there, minimally I'm saying. And that means you're, like, today's a really good day for bands as long as you can get in and get out quickly. Um, two to three every time and that means also for you scale uppers uh, you could do strict one thing I have to say about Tabata day since the total oh, total reps completed is your score you have to make sure that you are transitioning well meaning like you only get 20 seconds of work make sure all 20 seconds of those are intentional 
if some of it is rest on purpose, that's fine, but don't like spend time picking the dumbbell up. Be ready to go at the top of every minute with that dumbbell. Be ready to go on the rig every time. Don't make part of the minute you're hopping up there and situating your hands. Get ready in advance. That way you can dominate this workout. All right, enjoy.